Hey guys, Space Rain 658 here. Today we're going to be covering Common UI. Um, we're going to be doing a very basic dive into how to get started in it. Um, but as we go forward, this is going to be a series where we're going to be covering how to create a bunch of different UI elements using Common UI. Um, sort of what are the pitfalls of it and when to use what and when to use not. Um, just from a basic understanding, Common UI is meant to be sort of a way for um, generically for you to interact with UI elements that is designed to be as um, user friendly as possible. Now, with that, there are some things that's not really meant for. Uh, for example, HUD elements and things that you're not actually interacting with a key. Now, that's not to say you can't create them that way, uh, but generally it's meant more for uh, things we actually need both gamepad and let's say keyboard and mouse to actually interact with. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. There's a couple of things you're gonna to wanna to do when you get started. Right now, I've just created a couple of folders here for myself, uh, but you're actually gonna to wanna to go in and make sure in your plugins that you've actually activated um, and restarted after activating common UI. So if you haven't already, go ahead and type in common and you'll see here, make sure you've activated it and restart your engine. And then from there, we're gonna actually go into um, our input section here that I created and we're gonna wanna create something called a, uh, sorry, it's not blueprint, it's under miscellaneous. There's the common UI input action data table. Now, what this is, is this stores any input actions you want that aren't the bare default, um, you know, sort of navigable items. Now, uh, for example, you don't need to add the D-pad to here because um, that's something that is intrinsic to Common UI's input routing. Uh, but what you will need to add are things like select, back, um, and then any kind of tab left or right. So let's go ahead and uh, create this and we'll just call it input data table we're going to open it up here and we're going to create uh, for now we'll just create two um, so we're just going to create the uh, select and back um, and we're going to give it some keys so for the select um, we'll also give it the name of select uh, we'll do the same thing for here we'll give it the name of back And for this one, for the keyboard, it's going to be enter. Um, and for the gamepad, I've got my Xbox controller here. We're just going to hit A. For back, we're going to hit backspace for the keyboard and B for the gamepad. Now you can set up some brush defaults here. Um, I'm not too worried about that right now. We'll dive more into that when we actually get to adding UI elements to the screen. Um, when it comes to actually dealing with showing the keys. Um, but for now, We've got our select and our back. Um, now this is the data table. Now to actually um, handle that data table, we've got to create something known as a um, sorry, common input data. And what this common UI input data will do is this just allows us to set that select and back um, as part of that. So we'll just call this our input data. We'll save, compile, save, close this and reopen it. Now in here, uh, as you can see here, we have our default click and default back. These are what actually trigger our click handler and our back handler. So let's select our data table there. And then for this first one, it's a select. And the second one it is our default back. Uh, we weren't about to hold yet. All right, um, so with those set up, let me actually close that. And let's go into our project settings. There's a couple things we need to tweak here. Uh, first, if you go under game and then common, in, common input settings, um, you're going to want to add that input data. Now, Unreal Engine includes generic input data by default, but there's so much in there that's not really needed that I just kind of avoid it. And then you have um, here are platforms. Essentially, these are ways you could handle um, these platforms, and you can include controller data here. Um, but we're going to actually go ahead and create a generic controller data um, to add into these sections. So I'm just going to delete this. And so let's go ahead and right click and we're going to want to look for controller uh, common input base controller data. And we'll call this controller data underscore windows because this will be for our Windows computers. So we'll save, compile, close, and reopen, and that gives our minimized version. You could add some textures here, but that's not really necessary. Um, for Windows, we want it to default to mouse and keyboard. 
Um, but if we want to default to GamePad as an example, we can set this as generic and just give it some names and things like that. For now, we'll just leave it mouse and keyboard. And we'll also duplicate this for Linux. That way we have one for each. Um, just depends on what you're doing, you know, what platforms you're supporting. Um, if you're doing Android and such, in fact, let's just put this as GamePad to show as an example. Um, but yeah, just whatever platforms you're supporting, you just want to make sure you have a version of it. Um, and then you just add it here to the controller data. Um, down below, as you can see here, we've got automatic gamepad type detection and default input, default input config checked. Um, these are basically just two of the basic settings that make sure that Common UI can actually see what you're using and it'll kind of use some default inputs um, to kind of handle how you navigate. Um, there are two other options, allow out of focus device input. That's so that if you're tabbed out or on another screen, you could still have inputs going in. And then you have enable enhanced input support. Um, that's not fully fleshed out to the point where I'm ready to use it yet. So I'm waiting for that to get a few more updates. Um, that will be something that we do kind of tackle maybe later in the series. All right. Um, so that should be pretty much everything for this section. Now what we're going to want to do is go search for our viewport. Because what we want to make sure we do is we change this from game viewport client to common game viewport client. That is actually what is required to um, handle common UI. So I'm going to go ahead and restart now. All right, now that we've restarted, as you can see, everything's kind of back. Let me go ahead and go back to my map I was at here. All right, um, so now we've got the basic setups for all of our input systems. Let's actually go ahead and dive into actually adding our first um, UI element. Now, at first, when you're creating this, it may take a little bit of time because you're gonna wanna add a lot of styles and things, um, but just for the, the speed of this tutorial to kind of get you into it, uh, let's kind of dive into actually just creating our, our widget. Um, so the first thing you want to do is go to your blueprint class and then you're going to want to create a common user widget. Uh, this is going to be what is known as a uh, stack. And so you have two options. You have stacks and queues. Um, the biggest difference is really that um, queues are meant to be uh, last in first out versus stacks are um, a little bit more flexible in what or you can pop things on and off the stack. Um, and so I prefer those myself. Um, so let's go ahead and create one. So we'll just call this a widget blueprint uh, menu uh, stack. Uh, I call that EBP instead of WBP, but ignore that for now. Uh, and then within here, we're gonna wanna actually add our stack. So. Uh, the common activatable widget stack is what actually holds the different menus. Um, you can even have a root component set once you've got something created, uh, but for now we won't worry about that too much. Um, let's go here and then within our uh, different elements here, let me pull this up real quick. Um, so we've got a few things we want to do here to actually get this set up to be, you know, what we need it to do. Uh, so one of the big things is going to be we need to create some custom, uh, custom function. Uh, there's some more we'll create later on, but for now we'll just mo mainly focus on something called a push menu stack. And what this is going to do uh, is is um, actually push any kind of new UI elements to our stack. Um, so let's go in here and we'll call this on common activatable widgets. And what a common activatable widget is while we're adding one here um, is basically it's just any kind of widget um, that can be interacted with with common UI. Uh, that's kind of the, it's the base version of that. Um, and so we'll just say this is the menu to add. Uh, so let's call it menu here. Um, and then what we're gonna wanna do is actually reference our widget stack here. So we'll actually just rename this to being stack. And let's go ahead and grab it here. 
and then we'll do something is called a push widget. Um, and so like I was talking about earlier where you, you add um, widgets to the stack, that's what this actual function does. It's built into um, that widget stack um, that we added to the UI here. Now, um, we're not quite done. One thing we're gonna wanna do is you know pass to this um, common activatable widget our actual stack reference so that way it can push its own menus on top of the stack or later on when we add modals we'll be able to add modals to the stack as well um, but before we can do that you know we want to do that in a little bit more of a generic way um, rather than directly referencing you know maybe each and every single type of possible activatable widget class that's a lot um, and we don't want to necessarily extend the base activatable widget itself because it maybe something we don't want to do on all of them um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a blueprint interface. Um, so let's go here. We'll call it BPI underscore uh, UI interface. And inside of here, we're just going to call um, stack ref. And so what this is going to do is it's going to just send the stack ref um, from our base stack up to whatever activated which is currently on the stack. Uh, we're being added to the stack more correctly, I should say. And this will just get a reference to um, what we call it, menu stack. So our, our base class here, the EBP uh, menu stack, we will just get a reference to that, which speaking of which, let's rename that real quick so it's correct, WP. Um, but yeah, so and we'll just call this our stack because we're passing it around. And then we will do stack ref message and get a reference to ourself. And we'll probably also want to do this um, on pre-construct just in case, you know, um, when you reopen a menu stack, a lot of times if there was a previously active widget when it was closed, it'll still be active. Uh, so one thing you can do is just grab the stack and then get any active widget. So whatever the current active widget is, um, and we'll just call this stack ref because um, the reference will have been removed. Um, you want to make sure you pass in a, a more correct current version, right? Um, all right. So let's see here. So that should be pretty much it for, you know, this initial part. So now, you know, the next thing would be on construct, we actually... Um, create our our first push widget here uh, but to do so we actually need to create that widget so let's go ahead and do that let's come back here and we'll just create something very basic it'll be a you know activatable widget so we'll grab that common activatable widget and we'll just call this uh, player menu just for short um, and in the menu stack here actually uh, we're going to want to add a canvas panel. Uh, that way we only have it once in the entire stack. Uh, so let's go ahead and add a canvas panel here. We'll actually wrap the stack in that canvas panel. Um, and then we'll just make sure that this fills it out completely. And then on our player menu, now that we've got a stack, you know, we'll add something maybe like a common border. Um, this is what I, one of the things I saw earlier where you could add styles. I'm not going to do that for now, at least not for this one. Uh, because it's not really needed um, but for for that you could add um, a style there and then let's add a vertical box and we'll just set this to be in the middle um, now one thing we're going to want to do is because you can't directly add common buttons they're actually not um, listed here under the common you need to actually create them as a you know a blueprint blueprint cast um, so to do so, you're going to want to actually go into here. And you're going to want to look for our common button base. That's going to be your actual um, button that you're going to want to create. And so for this one, we'll just call this base button. We open this up. Now, it's going to need a couple things. Um, it's going to need a style. Uh, technically, uh, it's not strictly needed. Um, but just so I can show you an example of what setting up a style looks like, we're going to create one real quick. So we create a new blueprint. 
Um, let's actually go ahead and open up and add it in our common UI style and we'll just call this base button style. Let's go ahead and save, hit compile, close this and reopen it. Common UI style. Now we can get the um, condensed version. Now in here I'm not too worried about most things except um, this min width and min height. We're set to like 200 and min height like 50. And then for these, we're going to set some just colors so we can kind of debug them. But um, whatever colors you prefer to set here, we can set images for the different versions. Um, but we'll just do this. Um, I won't add any sound here. You could add sound for the pressed or hovered. Um, that would get kind of annoying as we're testing things here right now, so I won't do that. But just so you're aware, that's where you'd set it. All right. Now we've got our base button. Now here's something you'll notice. If we go ahead and add it to our menu, uh, sorry, to our player menu, um, you'll probably notice that it actually doesn't have, um, even though we added that style, right? There's nothing here. Um, it doesn't take up any space, even with that, you know, that min width and min height uh, that we set here in this base button, you know, there's, it's kind of missing. Um, well, that's because in the base button, you need to actually add, um, something for that style to affect. So we go in and add a border, it'll boom, instantly add it here. If we hit compile, save, and go back to our player menu, as you can see, it's already updated here. Um, another cool thing is if you set any styles here, so if you have a text style that you set um, inside of here, it'll also affects, affect the text that is added in here as well. Um, so that way, if, if for example, you know you had text like this, uh, this would be affected by that, that stylized setting. Um, as should most, if not all, text in here. Now you can override that, I believe, uh, by coming in here and manually setting the style. So for example, you wanted two or three different kinds of styles in here, but maybe your base button style you didn't care about actually removing. Uh, I believe you can directly override it within here, uh, but there's a lot of other things that you can't override, just bet depends on the um, style settings themselves. All right, um, so we go ahead and add a couple of these here. And one thing you want to note is that the padding actually needs to be set when you're spawning your buttons, whether you're spawning them dynamically or just as a fixed um, number here. Um, you want to make sure you're setting the padding inside of the um, upper level widget because if you set it inside of here, um, it actually will not add padding in the way you're expecting. The style and the padding in here actually just gives the button more padding internally rather than externally. Uh, but yeah, so we've gone ahead and we've set up um, this button here. Now, a couple things that we'll want to make sure, um, by default, most of these are all correct, um, but something you just want to be aware of is there's a lot of options for selectable, locked, um, you know, input focus, hold, advance. There's, there's a lot of different options. By default, most of these should be just fine. Um, but inside of here, in our actual menu, you're going to want to set up our actual delete these real quick. Um, we're going to want to set how our focus target gets set. Now for this one, since we have predefined buttons, we'll just hit this here, uh, go back to our designer and make sure this top button is a variable. We'll grab it and set it. Now this function needs to be called on construct. So when construct fires, uh, we're going to want to get desired focus from target sorry, get desired focus target. Um, and then we'll actually just set the user focus to this. Oops, wrong user focus. There's a couple of different focus options, uh, but you wanna make sure you're doing the set focus um, here. And uh, that will make sure that when this element loads up, when this, when this menu loads, uh, that it sets that first button as your actual um, focusable targets, which as you can see here, these are set to is focusable. Um, that should be almost everything. Um, so the last couple things here, we can set that player menu here, like I said before, if we wanted to. Um, instead, I'm actually going to just spawn it on construct. So I can just call push menu stack. And we should call that player menu. And that'll give it a reference to our stack. And all right. This should be almost everything. I'm going to go ahead and we'll do a quick test and make sure this all works.
Um, one thing we are going to want to do is um, in our first person character, actually, uh, before we actually try to do it, we want to make sure we're actually constructing that base um, stack there. So let's go ahead and do our um, menu stack. There we go. Now we can go ahead and on hitting that number one key. As you can see, um, it works with the mouse. Now, if we grab our controller, you're going to see here that it doesn't actually, you know, highlight anything, that there's no actual focus being had until you click. Now, part of that problem is because the focus isn't actually being gained by this menu. So how do we actually get it to have focus? Now, as you can see here, the player controller isn't a valid local player, so it can't focus the widget. So we need to go in um, and actually... Sorry about that. Uh, I was losing my mind for a little bit. Couldn't figure out what was going on. If I actually go back to my third person character, uh, for some reason, the create I was using, um, I actually had somehow managed to hit construct um, object from class. Um, the problem is that has an outer, but doesn't actually take in an owning player. Uh, and so I was getting an error that, you know, I needed the player controller and I didn't have that. Um, so I've gone ahead and fixed that see here. So make sure you're using create and that it takes in an own in player. Um, once you've done that, you can just plug that into there and then plug everything else in here to focus correctly. Um, and that'll fix it. Um, so we go ahead and hit play now. We hit one and then boom. As you can see here, we've got focus and it works with both keyboard and mouse um, and as well as gamepad. Um, and it works both ways, but yeah. Um, so that's a very basic UI element here. Uh, next episode, we're going to work on um, what input actions are and actually how to handle them um, and things like that. Um, that way we can kind of work on um, how to actually functionally use menus. Um, one thing you can do in case you're wondering if, you, if you've gotten this far, but you, you're having a little trouble. Uh, if you go ahead and you see here how there's not actually events, um, what you can do, depending on if they are actual variables you set up or not, will be whether or not you actually see those events appear. So if you're if you're doing like a set in stone kind of menu, um, you can go ahead and just make sure that these are variables, and then from there you'll be able to actually see those on clicked events um, down here, and that's where you'd fire off whatever action you want to happen on click. Um, but yeah, otherwise that's it for this episode. Look forward to seeing you next episode. Good luck and good hunting.